Well, I mean, they're making it kind of easy on us. If they're really going to pursue this, you know, push to get rid of the Electoral College, if they're really going to try to pack the courts, uh, if Joe Biden's not going to stand up and stop the impeachment, then, yeah, I mean, it does make our job easy. If they pursue these radical policies that most of America outside of, you know, major metropolitan areas don't support, it is going to make our job easier. When Trump over the last couple months, especially right before the election, was, was shining a lot of light on you guys and telling people, you know, watch Newsmax, Fox in the morning is crazy, watch Newsmax, they're doing good stuff, and then he'll point people to OAN, and then the next day he hates this network and suddenly he likes these guys. Uh, how, how sort of aware is everybody that like, oh, Trump's watching now and we better, I don't know, Act accordingly, ignore it, what? Oh, I, I, everyone's very aware, obviously. And, you know, you know some t it's, it's, it's just kind of strange knowing that they have uh, us on at the White House and that, you know, again, something you say might actually matter inside that building. And that, again, there are times and I just can't believe that's actually the case. Now, that said, you know, we do try to make sure that we do not become Trump TV. That's not the objective here at Newsmax. Um, you know, the former mayor of New York City, Ed Koch, had that saying that, you know, if you agree with me 80 percent of the time, great. You know, if you agree with me 100 percent of the time, you need to get your head checked out. <laughs> and, you know, no politician is right 100 percent of the time. And, and as I tell people and I, try, you know, encourage my staff as much as you may love Donald Trump. And I have to be reminded of this myself because I myself, because I you know, really did think the Trump presidency could be transformational um, and consequential. And it has been. Um, and, it, you know, it's disappointing that there will not be another four years because you think about all the good things that happened, what could have been continued. But again, you, you know, you just have to really tell people that once somebody, once you bubble in that bubble and choose somebody to represent you, in elected office. They're not your friend anymore. It's not your sports team. You don't support them like that. You got to hold them accountable. And we can compliment the things that Donald Trump does right, and we can criticize the things that he does wrong. You know, it, it's the only way you can really honestly consider yourself, you know, a check on the powerful. And if you don't do it eventually for somebody like Donald Trump or be honest with his supporters, you don't really have the moral authority or the credibility to do it to Joe Biden. And we've seen that, you know, with other people. You have to find some place you can agree with the opposition, but also disagree with your own side. In a weird way, do you think that that'll make your job a little bit easier, having a Biden administration? Because people will know, okay, you, you didn't want Biden, but now you can like sort of be more openly critical. Like I got you, you weren't pulling punches, but that, it, that in a weird way, conservatives are almost set up to be to be the against team? Well, you know? I mean, they're making it kind of easy on us. If they're really going to pursue this, you know, push to get rid of the Electoral College, if they're really going to try to pack the courts, um, if Joe Biden's not going to stand up and stop the impeachment, then, yeah, I mean, it does make our job easy. If they pursue these radical policies that most of America outside of, you know, major metropolitan areas don't support, it is going to make our job easier if they continue to call for defunding the police and we watch once great cities like Los Angeles and Philadelphia and New York and Portland, Oregon and Atlanta continue to decline and, you know, to become places of decay. It's going to make our jobs easier. And I, when I'm, not, I'm not hopeful for that. I definitely want to see the best for America. But if they continue to pursue these policies, if they do what they tell us they were going to do during the campaign, then I'm sad to say that our jobs will be much easier. Yeah. God, and as I said before, I hate to tell you, I think they're gonna do it. Yeah. I, I just, my take is just that they're gonna do it, that they're, they're no, there's just nothing too crazy, which is a very weird, a very but, weird you know, thing. I, and then again, this is where I come back to the American people. They're not gonna let them do it, I hope. I, I, was, I was reading about this today. Well, what if, it, what if big tech just stops the American people from letting them connect? We can't, I mean, that's we the can't next let them. I, I, mean, I go on your show and talk about this a lot, yeah. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is we existed without big tech, and I, I don't want to diminish the risk that this poses. Um, and, you know, you hear about things like um, email providers cracking down on Donald Trump's ability to reach his supporters through email and, and radio networks telling, you know, their radio hosts. And I, I just yesterday I was saying, look, they're coming for us on big tech, but there, there, may, there may still be those other avenues where conservatives used to reach 
their audiences. And I, I am concerned about that. But I do have faith in the American public. Uh, in Bartow County, Georgia today, I was reading about uh, local elections officials there uh, and the county commissioners there, and they're doing a recount, a, a hand recount of all the ballots there from the Georgia Senate runoffs. Not that they need to, it didn't qualify, you know, the race was not within the margin that they require the recount. But what they're doing is they're using this as an opportunity to build confidence and show the people who want to participate that it was a legitimate process, complete transparency, and they're also using it to train people how to be poll watchers and how to process the ballots next time around. So, you know, I gave that uh, long monologue last week when you were on my show about the real fight is at the local level, getting involved, mm -hmm. people rolling up their sleeves, going to the school board, going to the county commission, becoming poll watchers, becoming poll workers. And, you know, I'm so encouraged to seeing that happening. And again, you have 1.5 million people that can be really mad if something happens to your show. And, you know, we got to pick our battles to make sure they can't do this to us. We got to hold our lawmakers accountable because they pass these laws that they're not willing to enforce. You know, if they're not going to do that, get those laws off the books. President Trump was right for trying to repeal Section 230. You know, it's a law from 1996, Dave. I mean, can you imagine trying to use a computer from 1996 <laughs> in today's technological world? They need to get rid you, of this law. It's, it's expired. Are you saying my Apple IIc? <laughs> or I guess that was, that was probably 1986, not, not did you 1996. Have, did you have Quark, the game Quark? What, what was it? What? That was... Quark, oh no, I'm thinking Qbert is Q the guy Bert, jumping yes. on the, that, I know Qbert, who's Quark? Quark? Quark was some game on my Apple IIe, I think, and, and there was Winter Olympics too, I love that game. Do you, Winter Olympics was- Oh, I, re I definitely remember Winter Olympics, I had that on Nintendo, but I, what about Lemonade Stand, did you have Lemonade that? Lemonade Stand was a great, and speaking of the Winter Olympics in the 80s, since we're, how great were the Winter Olympics in the 80s when you had the Eastern Bloc, and you like, you know, if, you di if, the, if the United States did not beat <laughs> Uh, the Eastern Bloc, and whether it was downhill skiing or any sport, it was like, oh, what does it say about us as a nation? You know, I will tell you this, I've said this on my show a couple of times, I think that, like, if you think of Rocky IV, yes. you know, against Drago, right? He's fighting Drago in Moscow on Christmas Day. We knew as Americans who our enemy was, right? Yep. It was Russia was the enemy. Now, now that's, you don't want to live in a perfectly polarized world, but I think it, that thing where we were fighting the Russian empire, we were America for capitalism, they were for communism, it was like, that was the thing and it sort of helped define ourselves. I actually think that one of the reasons we're so out of whack right now is we don't know who our enemy is. We don't know point. if it's external or internal. We don't know if the good guys are the good guys or the bad guys are the bad guys. Did Russia affect our election? Hate Trump or help Trump? Is China, like none of it makes sense. So people often define themselves by what they're against and we don't know what we're against right now. I know, and you think about that movie, you think about uh, Red Dawn, or you think about, I, there was this movie called Ruskies, remember that one? About a, uh, you know, all the people that used to defect, and this is another thing about, you know, sports, is, you know, people from Cuba or Russia or Eastern European countries that used to defect to the United States because we all believed this was the best place for freedom, and now it feels like only half of this country believes that this is a place you should actually to defect to if you're an athlete, but if you're you know, an immigrant, they wanna open up the door and let everybody in. And it's just so strange to hear that. It's a little odd that nobody leaves America, although I think that may be changing kind of soon, right? I mean, if it, was that, if it was as bad for all of these years as they'd said, you'd think somebody would leave. The only people who leave are the, are the rich guys who put the money in the Cayman Islands and disappear to the Galapagos Islands. That's right. They, they, they've got someplace else to go. And, you know, the peop, I, I love this list of people. Who, I'm leaving if Donald Trump wins. Of course, they never <laughs> left. I, you know, love it or leave it really is it. And, it, and it, you know, this is where I wish more Americans, you know, actually would travel around the world and, and appreciate how great it is to live in this country still to this day, how much better we have it than anywhere else. I mean, you know, we talk about big tech cramping down on us, and you know, I was just really repulsed to see uh, a Chinese communist newspaper saying, oh, look, what, look what's happening in America, it's dangerous to crack down on free speech. I mean, they're signaling to their population that America, the idea of America and freedom and liberty, you know, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness isn't real. And the fact that that doesn't get more coverage, or you don't have a universal response uh, from this country. In fact, you have some news outlets actually unwillingly, you know, un or it's not unwillingly, but unknowingly taking money from the Chinese Communist Party and, you know, propagating their propaganda. 
uh, without knowing it, you, you know, you would think, to your point, that there would be more awareness about how dangerous the enemy is, and that's China. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about the media instead of nonstop yelling, check out our media playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out the full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.